Again, good evening. I just put up the backup video just for the sermon. So uh, we have uh, a sermon put to the side, uh, videotaped to, to, uh, totally separate from the YouTube uh, live or from Zoom. Again, the Zoom call the phone number is 860-623-5080. The YouTube is ct.church or livingwaterct.org. Either one gets you to the same place. Our website is ct.church. I am glad that, uh, that you are joining me here tonight live or watching it later. And tonight I want to activate your faith. How many want to activate their faith? Anybody? There we go. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's go to uh, Book of James, chapter 2. We got a few verses to read here. James chapter 2, we're going to start with verse 14. And we'll read all the way to verse 26. What do we, we as Christians, what do we like to do? Read the Bible. I hope that is your answer. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or daily food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but, not, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, is, if, it's, if it is not accompanying by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe there is, there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe it. And shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? when he offered his son Isaac on, on the altar. You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, not by their faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is dead. Amen. Everyone believes something. I'm saying it again. Everyone believes something. Even the atheists have faith. You ask me, how does an atheist have faith? Well, the atheist believes, he, there's no way to know, the atheist believes there is no God. Very foolish, absolutely. But the atheist, even the atheist, has faith. The Bible goes even a step further and says, Verse 19 in, the, in James uh, chapter 2. You believe that there's one God? Good, great, awesome, way to go. Amen. How does that sound? Even the demons believe that. Not only do they believe, they shudder, they shake. Because they know the power of the Almighty God. Amen. They know who He is. They not only believe who He, who he is to us, they met Him in person. They met him and they know him. They rebelled against him. And that is why they shudder. Now, the question is, how do we activate our faith? Or why should we activate our faith? Isn't just having faith enough? And they, you can have faith and you could be happy with the faith that you have. However, until you activate it, it's just faith. Has anyone ever purchased a new phone or a new computer? Anyone? Yes, I see a few hands. Good. Now, now that you have, uh, have you have purchased a new phone or a new computer, usually in the store, what happens? They open it up for you, right? They give it to you, and it's your job to activate the phone. 
Having the phone is good, but activating the phone is better. Having a computer in front of me is great, but seeing myself uh, move and see myself uh, activate the motions on the computer is better. You can purchase the, the best phone or you can purchase the best computer in the store, but unless you activate it, it remains dead, inactive. Therefore, it, with our faith, unless we activate it, unless we do something, it's, our faith stays dead. Without action, our faith is dead. It's not enough to say that you believe in God. Faith without deeds or works is dead. Now, we are not saved by works. Our works show, you, show us who we are. If we honor God, if we believe in God, that's great. That's faith. But if we do all that, we want to do something, uh, something, and uh, we don't want to take the next step and do something. We want to act out our faith. If a Christian is not exercising their faith by activating it, is it really faith? So the next, the next logical question is, how does a Christian activate their faith? Well, there's a few ways. Uh, get involved with others. Now I know, I'm very well aware, that we have to have some social distancing. I am well aware of that. No need to remind me. I've been reminded by all my non-Christian friends that you shouldn't meet, you shouldn't even have service online because each time, um, my, my non-Christian friends this is, they say each time you have a service online, you are inspiring people to get together. Well, that is the point. Our Christian faith is, has to be walked out. James 2, we're gonna read verses 14 through 17 just to remind us, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds or has no works? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food, and to us right now that's a very real thing. That we can actually be without food. Especially two weeks ago when the rush to get to the stores and take everything off the shelves was so real. I mean, we live in America after all. The land of the free and the home of the brave. That's what I heard, right? Amen, Amen if, of course. Yes, but at the same time, our stores have been totally devout of food at a point. And as a matter of fact, uh, some of the stores to try to help walk out this Christian walk have set up times for the people over 60 to come and do some shopping. Now that is a real, a totally real thing and it's a totally legitimate thing. Verse 16, if one, if one of you says to them, uh, this is talking about a brother or sister without clothes or without uh, food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, Keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about the physical need, what good is it? And in all reality, if I say, God bless you, have a nice day, I hope you find some food, yet my refrigerator is full and you have nothing, it is unfaithful for me to send you away from my house not sharing some food with you. Verse 17, in the same way, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Just like the phone or the computer that we purchased, it's shiny, it's beautiful, but until we activate it, it is dead. Our faith, we can speak, we can say lots of words, but until we activate our faith, our faith is dead. Now, this is something we've talked about many, many times, and we're going to continue to talk about it because it's part of our Christian faith. 
we need to have involvement with others, with one another. Now I have mentioned that the uh, that the directory is finished amongst our church, and for those of you who would like it, please email me, pastor at ct church, or text me, and you have my cell phone, and I will be I will be glad to send it to you. Why? Well, so we can interact with one another. I have set up the Zoom call, and we've been doing this for the past two weeks. Before this, we had a free conference call that come, but that was uh, only limited to a number of people. And we, if you remember, one day we broke it. We broke the whole system. It crashed. <laughs> it, it was kicking everybody off, and then it crashed all the way. So we went to the paid system. And we will continue to um, make things better if we are away from each other. And one of the ways we make things better is by calling each other, texting each other, and possibly even visiting each other and sitting outside, social distancing, six feet. I mean, the, the, uh, this coronavirus is, is a real threat. It really is a threat. I know we're all covered by the blood of Jesus, but at the same time, God has given us wisdom not to uh, get it, right? If we are vulnerable, Let's keep our distance. Let's keep um, safe. Let's just keep safe. Now, we may not be able to see each other. I'm talking about face-to-face, person-to-person. However, no one has taken away your phone. No one has taken away your phone. You can call somebody. You can text somebody. You can FaceTime somebody, you can Zoom somebody. Our Zoom system is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're not using it for service, you can call each other and see each other on this amazing system. Now we keep on talking about the command of Jesus to make disciples. And how many of you remember? I keep talking about reaching out to other people. Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to do what? To be my witnesses. And what do witnesses do? Well, they speak. They witness. They speak about the goodness of God. They speak about the good deeds of God. Therefore, the witnesses of God continue to uh, spread the gospels, continue to spread the, the good news. So tonight, I want to activate your faith even more to be disciples of Jesus, to be witnesses of Jesus and of his great works. The only way uh, I've seen uh, our responsibility fulfilled would be to involve ourselves with others. Now, we all have that social social distancing that we uh, follow right now. As a matter of fact, if you notice behind me, I have a few people, and they are more than six feet away from me, and they are more than six feet away from each other. Why? Because we honor what the government has asked us to do. Not because we are afraid, but because we are using wisdom in order not to get sick. And getting sick is a real possibility. And for those of you who, if any of you came in contact with uh, the coronavirus, we will pray for you and we will believe that the blood of Jesus will cover you and that the blood of Jesus will heal you. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> now, the greatest commandment, the second greatest commandment, how many remember the second greatest commandment? The first greatest commandment was to love your God. And what is the second greatest commandment? Matthew twenty two thirty nine, 39. Right. And the second is like it, Love your neighbor as yourself. And the way you activate your faith is by telling your neighbor. And your neighbor doesn't have to be the person that lives right next to you, even though that's very, very appropriate. Sometimes your neighbor is somebody who you work with, somebody who you have met in the past, someone who you love even. That could be your neighbor. And loving your neighbor as yourself is one of the ways you activate your faith. <clears throat> in order to respond to God's love for us in a, in a way that God desires, 
We need to do a few things. We need to involve ourselves with others. And the way we involve ourselves with others is by speaking to them, calling them, texting them, loving on them. And we, sometimes if we have to go to the grocery store for them, we go to the grocery store for them. I know of somebody here on the Zoom call who received a benefit of love from another somebody who was also on the, uh, on the Zoom phone call. And wasn't it great? Absolutely. I, I felt honored to be uh, your pastor when, uh, when I heard about that. We need to love others as we love ourselves. That's the th second thing that we need, we need to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God is not uh, canceled, but loving your neighbor is the second greatest commandment. James 2, 15 through 16 says this. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or daily food. We can, add, we can throw in toilet paper in there because obviously our, our, our shelves are empty. And this is not something that I would say on a normal um, sermon. However, today it is very uh, relevant. And one of the things that Jesus was always talking about, he was, he was relevant to his times. <clears throat> and we, as I speak to you, as we speak to each other, we need to be relevant to the times. If one of you says to them, go in peace, get warm, well fed, blah, 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 you understand, but you do nothing for their physical need, what good is it? And this is very relevant, especially for today. Some people literally can't go to the store. We know the situation outside. The coronavirus is real. There's almost a million people infected. Almost 200,000 people have been um, healed or have passed um, through the healing process uh, from the coronavirus. But oh, almost a million people have been infected. Those are the people that we know about. With the people that we don't know about, we don't know about just yet. But we should not be afraid. But if we may need to go to the store for somebody, that is a way to activate your faith. Can I have you say, activate your faith? Activate your faith. Can I, say, can I hear you say louder, activate my faith? Other people are in isolation. Some people are lonely. It is lonely to be isolated. And they, let me, let me underline this and bold this word, they need, can you hear me? They need to hear your voice. Can I hear you say activate your faith? Yeah. Activate your faith. The way you activate your faith is by calling them, by texting them, maybe even going to the door or to the window and, well, don't be creeps. Come on, don't, don't knock on their window. <laughs> Warn them that you're coming, and, and if you can't see them face to face, maybe you can see them through the window or something, or through the door screen. Be safe, and activate your faith. Your friends, your neighbors, those that don't know Jesus, they need to hear from you. They need you to activate your faith. Let me hear you say again, activate my faith. As Christians, we activate our faith by recognizing the responsibility to God's Word. Yes, God's Word. We believe, therefore we receive. And if we, did, if we did not believe, how can we expect to receive? And we believe and we receive, and we believe because of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Faith comes through hearing the, uh, the Word of God. Amen? The, if, if, if it's not preached, if I don't speak to you, if I don't sp uh, take my faith and, and spread it to you guys, you, you probably will not receive faith. But you can receive faith by reading the Word of God. That's how where I get my faith. And I activate my faith by doing and doing and doing. And I don't mind. I love it. This past two weeks, I have been the busiest I have ever been. And I love it. Sometimes I feel that I am overextending myself, but I love it. And the more I do, the more I see God working through me, 
It's not me working. It's God working through me. The more my faith activates. Activate your faith. Let me hear you say activate my faith. James 2, 18 to 24 reads the following. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. I'm going to stop there for just a mere second. You cannot show your faith on words alone. Can you tell somebody you love them? Yes. Will they believe you if you don't follow that up by an action? See, I love my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. I love her so much that I proposed to her and she became my fiance. At a given time, August uh, 30th, we got married. I activated my love to her. Faith is the same way. Faith without action is dead. Love without action is dead. I had to activate my faith. I could have said I love you a thousand and one times, but until I acted upon it, there were only words. You believe that there is a one God? Good, great, awesome, congratulations, yes. Even demons believe that. They even sh uh, shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and then this was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. A couple days ago, I was speaking to you on the Zoom phone call and I said, Abraham did not only believe in God, he what? He believed God. I'm going to say it one more time. Abraham did not only believe in God, Abraham believed God. We can believe in God. We can say we have faith. But until we start believing the promises of God over and over, he has promised and promised and promised. And the only way to get those promises to is to activate our faith. Amen. You see that a person is considered righteous, verse 24, James 2. You see the person is considered righteous by what they do, not by faith alone. Can you imagine if Abraham just believed in God, but never actually believed God? It would be a very sad moment. I'm sure God would find somebody else who would be faithful, yet we would never know a thing about Abraham. We know a lot about faithful people. We know very little about not faithful people. Therefore, faith is both believing and being active. Faith is both believing because you need to believe, but at the same time you need to take the next step and become active. If you are not being active, is it really faith? It's not just something that you prove by being actively involved you have to believe and be active. It's both. Faith is both. It is believing and being active. Believing and being active. It's both. Hebrews 11 is a very, very famous faith chapter. On your free time, I ask you to go and read Hebrews 11. It is an amazing, let me say this again, it is an amazing faith chapter. And if we, can, if we read it, it uh, we, we see that it's combining the faith, the believing factor, and 
the acting out of faith. We can go throughout the entire Old Testament and we can see the people believing God and at the same time acting out their faith. You can believe, but until you take the action, they're separate. They're not one. If we desire to, uh, to activate our faith, then we need to look closely at what we say as believers. We can say we believe in God, we believe in His promises, but if we never speak about God, if we never speak about His promises, are we believing God? Therefore, what we say is very, very important. The closer we look at what we say, we can align ourselves with what we believe. And we can take action on what we say and what we do. Now, I want to give you two examples. First example. And I, I want... I. I'm not praising myself. Let me just get this out of the way. I am not praising myself. I'm just, I, I just want to show you by example of what I believe and what I do. Okay? For two examples. The first one is, um, I am believing for God to grow the church. The second is, I believe that God calls me to love everyone. Two Two things, two examples, and I could give you a, a many, many more. I have thought about these two for uh, to present to you tonight. First one, I believe that God is going to grow our church. Living Waters is going to grow. I believe it. Do you believe with me? Amen. Yes. What is the response? What is my response? I invite. I reach out. I share the gospel, I meet the needs of the people, I re try to relate to the people, I share my excitement. Why? I do all this not because I'm going to impress somebody, not because I have to do this, not because I have nothing else to do. Because if you ask my children, now that they have been home for the past two weeks, they can tell you dad stays busy. Dad is constantly on the phone talking to people from church, talking to telemarketers that call the church, writing sermons, uh, reading the Bible, listening to other sermons, reading books to get fed so dad can um, feed the people of God, the people that God has provided for him. That's correct. You heard it from, from him. I do this not because I desire to attain some numerical goal. I know I said we're going to see a thousand people at Living Waters. I know I said that. And I believe that we'll see a thousand. I'll see, we'll, I believe we'll see 10,000. But the, the, the number is not the goal. And I don't, I don't do this because I want to see a thousand people sh <coughs> excuse me, show up to Living Waters on a Sunday morning. Even though that would be great. I do this because I believe God desires to grow living waters. I do this because Acts 1.8 says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to do what? To be my witnesses in Windsor Locks, in the Hartford County, in the state of Connecticut, in, in um, the United States of America, and we could go North America. You can go uh, the continent and the, the entire world. That is what I believe. And I have given you an example how I walk out, how I activate my faith. As a matter of fact, I always try to activate your faith. Remember the 2020 vision for this 2020 year? Come 20 minutes early. Amen. And invite 20 people. There is no easier way than to share on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, the messages that I'm putting out. There's nothing easier than hitting the share button. I know all of you can do it because I see you sharing other things. 
Praise God. The second thing, the second example, I believe that God, that God calls me to love everyone. Do you believe that? Amen. What is my response to this belief? Well, I talk to you. I talk to every single person. Every single person that calls me gets my attention, gets my undivided attention. I look for ways in which I can comfort people. You know, I'm not a very good comforter. That's not my job. That's, a, that's the, uh, the job of the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. But I do what I can do from my end to comfort people, to speak to people, to let people know that God loves you. I, I do my best to help people move on. I help people to go through grieving stages. I help people as much as I can do, as much as God gives me the ability to be their comforter. I tell every single person I meet, I love you. Not because I, uh, I, I say this as a ritual, but because God has given me love for every single person. God has given me love for every single person. Whenever I see a sinner, you know what I see? A potential child of God. When I see a righteous person, you know what I see? I see a child of God that can walk better. I love every single person. Here's one that I struggle with now. I love hugging people. Virtual hug. <laughs> Everybody, virtual hug, come on. Virtual hug. Virtual hug. All of you, virtual hug. <laughs> I love hugging people. I love showing affection to people. Why? Because God has given me love to every single individual. I pray with you. Have any of you ever called me and I would not offer to pray for you? I always enjoy praying with you guys I love it especially when you are going through situations I love praying with you I love activating your faith because faith comes from hearing the Word of God I love people that are unlovable in my eyes even sometimes I love them because God is giving me that love I treat everyone with respect. I treat everyone with honor. Is everybody respectable? Absolutely not. Is everybody honorable? Absolutely not. Yet, God has given me this love to, towards people. And I can love on them, I can respect them, and I can honor them, and I can always pray with them. <clears throat> Why do I do this? I do all this not because I feel I'm going to be, become a better Christian? Absolutely not. Do I, I, I don't do this because I believe that God will love me but better, or I seek that God responds to me better through my actions? Nope, that's not why I do it. I do it because I activate my faith. James 2.26 As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds or works is dead. The same way when you buy your phone or your computer, it is dead until you activate, until you turn it on, until you put in the passwords and all of that. The phone or the computer is dead until you activate it. Our faith is dead unless we activate it. Now this message was not supposed to condemn anybody. I'm going to say this again. This message is not supposed to condemn anybody. Don't condemn yourself if you have not done this yet. Today is a good day to move forward in your future and activate faith. Today is an excellent day to activate your faith for your future. And as I finish, I want to re remind you of the principles and, uh, and if, see if we can apply these principles from the message that you just heard about activating your faith. So activate your faith, your faith by sharing your faith. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Be gentle, be humble. Seek to serve rather than to be served. Be kind, be patient, be loving. Activate your faith. I know that you you, you uh, probably sitting very comfortably. You probably enjoy this message. But I want every single one of you, and me including, to activate our faith. And the first way we activate our faith is by sharing our faith. I believe in God. Why do I believe in God? Ask yourself, why do you believe in God? Yeah, it's a question because somebody is going to ask you. And the reason why most people don't activate their faith is because they don't know what to do next. And we will talk about this, not today, not today. We will talk about speaking why you believe. I think we, we might do that tomorrow night on Zoom. Why do I believe? I believe that's what God wants us to do uh, tomorrow night. So 7 o'clock tomorrow night on Zoom. Why do I believe what I believe? Why do I believe in God? And that is the first step in activating your faith is to share your faith. Love your neighbor as yourself. Second greatest commandment. Be gentle, be humble, be kind, be patient, be loving. We tell it to our children. And the more I spend time with my children, the more I remind them, whoa, slow down, be gentle. Hey, hey. Don't, don't ask your brother or your sister to get that for you. Go get that for them. Be kind, be patient, be loving. And most importantly, I want you to activate your faith. Amen? Amen. Amen.